Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any math problem at all that gives you trouble and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the math problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, second edition, happens to contain the exact same problems and in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the math problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are a big part of the exam, big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away, unfortunately for us. The newer books do not provide us enough practice problems, enough practice questions for quantitative comparison problems. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions from this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 341. Please turn to it. Page number 341, problem number 4. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here's what the problem says. It's a geometry question. We, 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 we've been given a rectangle, a rectangle ABCD right here, ABCD. And we are told that the side AD, side AD and side BC have been divided into segments of equal length. Segments of equal length as we can see. One, two, three, four, five and six segments. One, two, three, four, five and six segments. And these segments are of equal length. The question is very straightforward. We are being asked to compare the length of the segment EF, the length of the segment EF versus the length of the segment GC, GC. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do the problem yourself and then we'll compare, then compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a few seconds. So here we go. Well, here's, here's what's going on. It's actually, it's actually a very straightforward, simple question. You can tell by visual inspection, as a matter of fact, you can tell them from the visual inspection that G to C is going to be longer than E to F because the base is the base of the, well, let's see, G to, yes, G to C, because you see, it only goes, it only goes three units. If you, if you drop the line here, one, two, and three, that's it. From here to here, it's just one, two, and three, whereas from, if you look at G to C, it's one, two, three, and four. The base base in the case of G to C is 4 units because the, because the base is longer. The height is the same in both cases. The height is the same in both triangles because, the, because when you look at the triangle, when you look at the triangle G, C, D, here's the triangle G, C, D, G to D is 4 and the base, the height is the same in both cases and therefore the hypotenuse is going to be longer versus the triangle this is A, let's call this A prime. So if you look at the triangle A prime, right here, A prime, E, and F here, from A prime to F is, let me erase this one, two, three, four, so we don't get confused. One, two, three, four was before, but now it is one, two, and three. The base is three. The height is still the same. The height in both cases is the same. And because the height is same in both cases, the hypotenuse of this guy is going to be longer. I understand, I know that, I know we are making too much fuss about nothing at all. If by visual inspection we can tell that C to G is going to be longer. C to G is going to be longer. But if you had to show mathematically, if you had to show algebraically, it's actually quite straightforward. Apply the Pythagorean theorem, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees. If you apply the Pythagorean theorem, E to F is going to be X squared plus 3, 3 squared, X squared plus 3 squared, whereas G to C is going to be 4 squared plus X squared. 4 squared plus X squared. 
x squared appears in both columns, we can subtract x squared from both columns, x squared goes away, and as we can see, the 3, 3 squared is less than 4 squared. The answer is B. The answer is B. Number 5. Question number 5. In question number 5, In question number five, they give us a bar graph, a simple bar graph, and you just have to read it. Question number five was so simple, in fact, that 89% of people, 89% of people had no trouble. Here are the areas we're given. Here are the states. We're given, let's first write down here, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600. And we are given few states. First we have is New Mexico. New Mexico. So here is 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600. This is exactly how it appears in the exam. The New, Me New Mexico, we are told, goes up to here somewhere. This is New Mexico. Montana, we are told, is somewhere here. California, we are told, is... I'm being too sloppy here. I'm not going to be that sloppy. Let me redo it. I'm being way too sloppy. The New Mexico is somewhere here. Montana is here. California is somewhere here. Then we have Texas, which goes up to two and a half. Then we have... Alabama, which goes all the way up to somewhere here. Not halfway through, but a little bit more. I'm going to, I'm going to erase the previous problem because it's getting to be too much. Column A. In column A we have column A we have some of the areas of Texas, California, Montana, and New Mexico versus column B where we have versus column B where we have the area of Alaska. This should be Alaska. I don't know what the symbol is for Alaska. Because I know AL is Alabama. It's Alaska. Only God knows what the symbol is for Alaska. I don't know. Anyway, so let's do it together, shall we? I'll give you five seconds to do it yourself. These are, these are the areas of the different states in the bar graph. We're being asked to compare the sum of the areas of Texas, California, Montana, and New Mexico from this chart versus the area of Alaska. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Now here's the deal, when we come across something like this, we don't have to make too much fuss about it, don't spend too much time trying to read it and get a precise reading of it, it's not necessary. We're just being asked to compare the two quantities, this question is called quantitative comparison, which is why we write down the word computation and we cross it out for emphasis. Don't try to be precise because we're not computing anything, nobody is asking us for the precise measurement. As long as we can compare the two quantities, that is all that is required here. So a little bit of approximation is okay. Texas, where is Texas? Texas is about two and a half. Texas approximately two and a half, 250. California, California, I would say about uh, 150 something. About 150. Montana, I would say probably 125. Uh, New Mexico, New Mexico is right here. It's little more than 100. Let's say 100 plus. Are you with me? Let's add them up. Let's add them up. So let's see what we get here, okay? We're going to add up the 100 first, 100 plus 200 plus 300, 100 plus 200 plus 300 plus 200 is 200 plus 300 plus 400 plus 500 plus, plus, plus we have a 50 here and a 50 here, so that's 600. 600, we're done almost, we're done, 600 and another 25, so this is about 625. As soon as we reach to 600, we were done actually because this is less than 600. This quantity 
the area for Alaska, we don't know what it is, it doesn't give us a precise measurement, but whatever it is, we can clearly see from the graph, it is something less than 600. Something less than 600 versus something more than 625, or even if we had left it as more than 600, as a matter of fact, even if we had left it as more than 600, something more than 600 versus something less than 600, the answer is A. The answer is A. Number six. Question number six. Question number six. We are given two equations. In the first equation, we are told that x plus five equals twenty-one. In the second equation, we are told that y minus x equals negative eight. And we're being asked to compare column A versus column B. Column A we have y. In column B we have 6. Again, 5 second routine, pause and unpause the video, do it yourself. This is a very straightforward question. I didn't give you the percentile. 87% as you can see, if 87% of the people had no trouble with it, it cannot be that bad. Here we go. Subtract 5 from both sides. If we subtract 5 from both, both sides of the equation, we can find that x equals 16. Once we find out that x equals 16, put it in this equation here. So y minus 16 equals negative 8. Add 16 to both sides. And 16 goes away. And we find that y equals negative 8 plus 16, which is positive 8. So y equals 8 versus 6. The answer is A. The answer is A. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.